My name is Gerardo Zuluaga, and I'd like to show you a format that I teach my students on how to solve word problems. And this is a flyer, and there are 10 steps for solving word problems. And the problem that students have is usually how to get started. And this method teaches them a way to analyze the problem. So I tell them that solving word problems is really translating it from English into symbolic language which is mathematics and we start by constructing four quadrants and we label them uh, required given basis and solution and first thing is to find out what we have to solve for and I ask them to look for the question marker like what or how much or solve or compute and the first noun following that word is usually the uh, required quantity and I ask them to put a box on it and put the variable that's associated with that quantity so here it is mass and so the variable is m and then I ask them to um, put it in the required not just the variable but also the expected units so they'll know if they have to convert at the end uh, then we focus on what is given and I tell my students anything that has a number and units is part of the given circle those two quantities and based on the units determine what the variable is so kilograms per cubic meter is density meters can be length width and height and then to transfer it here into the given and this is an important step so that your students don't go back and forth trying to get the numbers because they could be distracted and many times will copy the wrong quantity and then um, you have to provide a basis for the solution and usually that is a formula and they write down the standard form of the formula so in this case density is equal to mass divided by volume but then rearrange it such that on the left side you'll have the required quantities so here we have mass is equal to density times volume then by examination we look and we see that yes we have density here but we don't have the volume and that tells us that we have to compute for the volume and any side computations you can also do in the basis so the formula for volume is length times width times height and we compute it here and now we are ready to solve the main part of the problem and I tell them always to start their solution with a formula variables only not to put in quantities already and then looking at this they know that that is what they're solving for and it's on the left side and these are the variables by inspection we see that we have the density up here and we write it down and then we have the volume which we have previously computed and then using dimensional analysis we cancel units and this is an important check if your units on the right side and the left side are the same then that means that you are using the correct relationship and I ask them to compute the values in one step only and not to write down intermediate values because they often try to apply significant figures to those intermediate values and uh, causing rounding errors and so here we write down the value exactly as it comes out in the calculator apply the scientific notation and then based on the given apply the significant figures and here we see that the smallest significant figure is one and therefore your answer should have one significant figure I also ask them to calculate it twice and it's really important that you separate the solution which includes the variables and the manipulate and the manipulation from the calculation which is substitution of values and if they've done it twice they check put a check mark 
And this is also verification because it's very difficult to get exactly the same wrong answer twice. Then finally put a box on your answers and then when you're done you can check that if you have one box in the required you have one box in the solution because oftentimes students stop solving the problem before they've gotten all the answers. And so I hope that makes this um, sheet more understandable. Thank you.